On today's video, we're talking everything lenses. The lens is where you want to spend your money. That's because the quality of your lens ultimately determines the quality of your image. Your photos are as good as the last piece of glass they go through. If you have a really expensive pro camera but are using a cheap lens, the images will be limited by this. Also, an investment in a good lens will last you much longer than an investment in a camera. Cameras are mostly electronic, while lenses are mostly mechanical. They're more durable, sturdier, and if you stick to the same brand, usually you're able to use the lenses on cameras as you continue to upgrade. People change cameras every two or three years, professionals do mostly, but lenses can last a whole career or a lifetime of a hobby. The focal length of a lens determines its angle of view and magnification. Lenses can be categorized into wide angle, standard or normal, and telephoto based on the focal length. Wide angle lenses have a shorter focal length, capturing a wide field of view, while telephoto lenses have a longer focal length, magnifying distant subjects. Wide angle lenses have a shorter focal length, typically ranging from 14 millimeters to 35 millimeters on a full frame camera, and they capture a wide field of view. This allows you to include more of a scene in the frame. Wide angle lenses are commonly used for landscape photography, architectural photography, and situations where you want to emphasize the environment or create a sense of space. Standard lenses offer a field of view that closely resembles human vision, making them versatile for various types of photography. They're often preferred for street photography, documentary photography, and situations where a natural perspective is the goal. What is considered mid-range lenses isn't an exact science. You're going to talk to photographers that consider a 60 millimeter already a telephoto and 35 millimeter a wide lens. The category of the lens doesn't matter as much as what it actually looks like and how to use it. So don't get too caught up on the terminology. Telephoto lenses have a longer focal length, typically ranging from 70 millimeters and above. Can literally go all the way to 400 and beyond. They provide a narrow angle of view, allowing you to magnify distant subjects and bring them closer. Telephoto lenses are commonly used in sports photography, wildlife photography, and situations where you need to capture details from afar. They also help in creating a compressed background, separating the subject from the background and creating an isolating effect. It's a lens that allows you to see from far away, hiding in the bush, capturing the tigers in the jungle, or hiding in the fence trying to get a photo of your favorite celebrity. The f-stop is how we measure the aperture. Most lenses offer a range of f-stops, anywhere from f1.8, which is the widest aperture, to f22, which is the smallest aperture. At lower f-stops, you're allowing more light through the lens and creating a softer background and foreground. At higher f-stops, anywhere from f8 and up, you're sharpening the background and foreground and creating a much larger focus area. Lower f-stops are preferred when shooting products, portraits, and details. And higher f-stops are preferred in landscapes, interiors, and even shooting big groups. When it comes to lenses, all you need to know is that a lower f-stop is harder to build and therefore more expensive. So if you want to buy any lens, the bigger the aperture, so think f2.8, f1.8, the more expensive that lens will be. But also, the better is going to be built. With the same logic, a zoom lens that provides you with a steady f-stop all the way through is going to be a better lens than a lens that changes from providing a big aperture at the widest, like f4, but only an f5.6 at the telephoto end. So, when you're looking at lenses and you're trying to understand quality, this is a big thing to notice. Lenses come in two different types. 
zoom lenses and prime lenses. As we know now, lenses have different focal lengths. So a prime lens is a lens that has only one fixed focal length and only shooting at that specific length. While a zoom lens is a lens that gives you the range of different focal lengths all within that one piece of equipment. An example of the most common prime lenses are 24 millimeters or 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter or even a 70 millimeter. Two very common zoom lenses would be a 24 to 70 millimeter and a 70 to 200 millimeter. So there are benefit and drawbacks to both. A zoom lens is going to give you a range. It's going to give you every single focal length available in one place without having to switch lenses. And that can be very convenient because you only need one lens to perform many different tasks. This is incredibly helpful for travel photographers, event photographers, sports photographers, where prime lenses have a fixed focal length, meaning they do not zoom. That's it, they do one thing. This is why they're known for their optical quality, wider maximum aperture and compact sizes. Prime lenses are favored for their sharpness, low light performance, and ability to create a shallow depth of feel. They also encourage photographers to think more about the composition and movement as they need to physically move to adjust for the framing. While the issue of compatibility will differ from brand to brand, most brands will have a line of lenses for their crop cameras and another for their full sensor. You are usually able to use a full frame lens on a crop sensor, but you will be cropping out a third of the view. While the crop lenses, which are much cheaper, you are usually not able to use them on a full frame camera. When you work on a crop sensor, unless you're using crop lenses, the regular field of view is going to be cropped by the 1.5 factor. So for example, a 50 millimeter lens becomes a 75 millimeter lens. A 24 millimeter lens becomes a 36 millimeter lens. So what you see on your crop sensor will be tighter than the real look of that lens. With a full frame camera, this is not an issue. It is important to keep in mind that you can find lenses within all kinds of budgets. Often, the more expensive the lens, the better quality the glass and the better it's constructed. The main price driving factor is going to be the build quality itself and the lens ability to focus at speed, perform in low light and produce a crisp and clean image. A cheap zoom lens might cover a lot of focal lengths around wide all the way to telephoto, giving you a variety, but it might leave you with undesirable image quality. Although starting off with a zoom lens will help you find out what focal length you like and help you experiment in different types of photography. So then when you're ready to invest in nice prime lens, you know what you like. So buying secondhand lenses is actually quite the money saver. Unlike cameras, most lenses aren't built with digital components, but rather they're built mechanically. Think a car versus a laptop. When something is built with mechanical parts, it tends to last longer and function better. Lenses are actually a much longer term investment than cameras. This is why I always recommend spending your extra money on the lens and not on the body. When it comes to brand name lenses and alternative options, I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. There is nothing wrong with a, let's say, Tamron lens, but generally speaking, and only generally, you will find that each brand makes better lenses for their own cameras. However, sometimes the quality difference isn't all that noticeable. And on that note, let's talk about using adapters. The same principle applies. If you're going to put an adapter on your camera to be able to put a lens that is not supposed to fit, you're going to lose something. Might be quality, might be speed, might be sharpness, but something is gonna go. When it comes to investing in your first lens, keep it simple. For any camera you choose, starting out with a basic zoom lens is a great idea to get some versatility and to start playing around. Most of the time, the kit lens, which is the lens that comes paired up with your camera package, is quite basic. If you're just starting out and on a budget, this will get you through your first year or two of shooting, no problem. However, 
If you have the extra budget, I would suggest adding a prime lens, maybe a 35 or a 50 millimeters, depending if you're more into portraits or environmental photography, to really start exploring that sweet 2.8 aperture and that shallow depth of field that most prime lenses have to offer. In my opinion, unless you're gonna drop $1,200 and up, it's not worth it to level up your zoom lens to the next version up from the basic one that you have, uh, especially when you're starting out. It's a lot of money and you not might see the difference. Remember, lenses hold their value. Once you feel you're ready for an upgrade, you can sell your lens and get a better one. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, whatever. See you next time.